Hello, welcome to the Produce Storage 101 web class. My name is Amy Catherine and I am an integrative wellness coach. My background is in nutritional biochemistry and I obtained my coaching certification through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition where I am also specializing in hormone health. I support clients who are suffering from hormonal imbalances uh, specifically related to the HPA axis dysfunction and I support them through dietary and lifestyle changes that um, support a healthy endocrine system so that they can restore balance to their bodies and live happy fulfilling lives doing all the things that make them um, thrive so um, today's class again is on produce so um, we can all relate to having thrown out a batch of fruits or vegetables that have gone bad in the refrigerator and there's nothing more frustrating when you have to do that especially when you know that there are other people doing without and you are throwing food in the trash so um, I've had a lot of people come to me and ask me for tips so I decided to put this class together so it's full of tips and tricks that you can use to extend the shelf life of all of your produce so let's just get right to it um, here are the fruits and veggies that we want to store at room temperature um, they will actually stay fresh longer when you keep them out on the kitchen counter or in your fruit bowl bowl so we have bananas basil cucumber eggplant garlic grapefruit green beans lemons limes onions oranges potatoes your summer squash sweet potatoes watermelon winter squash and zucchini um, so if you have been storing these fruits and veggies in the fridge they're taking up a valuable space so keep them on the counter instead um, and putting them in plain sight you'll be more likely to eat them anyway so uh, let's keep moving here are the ones that we want to store in the refrigerator so these types of produce prefer chillier temperatures and they'll be fresh longer when they live in the in your refrigerator so we have apples asparagus blueberries broccoli Brussels sprouts cabbage carrots your cauliflower cherries cilantro corn dark leafy greens grapes leeks let lettuce parsley peas pomegranate raspberry strawberries yes okay yum I'm hungry now um so these are the fruits and veggies that you want to store in your refrigerator now moving on these fruits and vegetables like to travel uh, so basically if you ever go to the grocery store and the avocados are rock hard on um, um, your you know instead of just passing on the avocados you can buy them keep them out let them ripen on your countertop and then when they ripen you want to move these to the refrigerator so not just your avocados but your apricots your kiwi fruit your mangoes your melons nectarines papayas peaches pears pineapple and plums so again um, let them ripen on the countertop and you can move them into the refrigerator uh, and they'll stay fresh longer that way so um, now some fruits and vegetables need some personal space so half the battle is knowing what needs a refrigerator and what stays on the countertop but the other factor that we need to consider is whether we can store specific fruits and veggies together or should they be separated because some um, some fruits and vegetables put off a gas ethylene gas so as a rule of thumb we want to keep our apples avocados stone fruits pears bananas and tomatoes away from our other fruits and veggies especially the leafy greens um, because they produce ethylene gas so um, what are stone fruits those are your fruits that have a stone or aka pit in the middle um, again here are our gas producers we have uh, apricots apples avocados your unripe bananas um, will produce gas your cantaloupe your figs your honeydew 
kiwi, nectarines, peaches, plums, tomatoes, right? So all of those give off ethylene gas and you want to keep those separate from other fruits and veggies, especially these, the following sensitive fruits. These are actually super sensitive to the ethylene gas and that are your bananas once they get ripe. Um, once they are ripe, you uh, want to definitely keep them away from the other fruits that are producing more gas or eat them or make banana bread. Or you can ripen them with um, by, by exposing them to the gas producers and make the banana bread. But also your broccoli, your Brussels sprouts, your cabbage, your carrots, cauliflower, cucumbers, eggplant, lettuce, peas, your peppers, squash, sweet potatoes, and watermelon. So those are your fruits and veg veggies that are actually super sensitive to the ethylene gas. Um, also your uh, leafy greens. Okay. So again, like I said, if you're looking to ripen your fruit more quickly or you have an avocado that's too hard and you want, want to make some guacamole, um, whatever fruit or vegetable that you want to, to speed up the ripening process, a plum for instance, you can stick it in a bag with a ripe banana. So the ethylene gas that is coming from the ripe banana will help um, help bring the fruit or vegetable you want to ripen to its prime uh, more quickly, right? So stick it in a paper bag with a banana and you'll get a ripe avocado. What's next here? Okay, so how the ethylene gas works is it's an aging hormone. Actually, it's a plant hormone. And um, just a fun fact, nearly 100 years ago, researchers noticed that the trees, which were closer to the gas street lamps that were giving off ethylene gas, um, which is flammable, uh, had leaves that were wilting faster and fruit that was ripening faster than the trees away from those lamps. So that was a dead giveaway a hundred years ago before we discovered it was the ethylene gas. So next, let's talk about onions, okay? So onions are one of the ones that uh, you don't want to refrigerate, should be kept in a dry, dark space. Um, but you also want to keep it away from your fellow dark and dry pantry dwellers, such as your potatoes and your winter squash or sweet potatoes or your watermelon. Um, and that's because the onions like to share their scent. So I don't think uh, onion scented watermelon really sounds appealing. Um, so, or... Uh, yeah, so onions also that are nestled up against your potatoes. I think I brought this up before in one of my um, posts. Like you don't want your onions with the potatoes because the potatoes will wilt and they'll sprout more quickly and go soft than they would if the onions were not present. And um, a, another little cool thing about onions to note here is that um, which... Uh, we'll talk about again later with the avocados. I'll, I'll mention it. I want to mention it here. Um, avocados go brown quickly when they're exposed to oxygen. Um, if you have half an avocado, uh, if you store that with a large piece of cut onion, the gas produced um, from that onion actually inhibits the oxidation of the avocado, which is super cool. Um, all right, so let's go on to scallions. The cool thing about scallions uh, is that you can save the whites uh, when you eat them and put them in water and regrow your scallions. So um, you should try that next time. Uh, how do you want to store your scallions, though, before you eat them? They go slimy or they dry out pretty quickly. Uh, I think we've all noticed that. So the next time you bring home a bunch Let's put them in a tall glass or a jar and put a, like an one or two inches of water and place the, the um, bulb down in the water so that the roots can take up that water, keep them from drying out so they'll keep fresher longer. And then you can just um, slide over like a Ziploc bag so that they're a little bit protected um, from air as well. 
So then you just put that in your refrigerator for the scallions. Even though you want your onions in a dark, dry place, the scallions, you put them in water, cover them uh, with a Ziploc, and then you can put that in your refrigerator. So eating sliced fruits quickly. All right. Cool fact about apples here is that... Um, a high quality like you can buy a tester to test um, test your apples which uh, it organic apples will actually brown if it's a high quality organic apple will um, not brown as quickly but um, if you're slicing apples or other fruits like pears bananas and avocados like you should slice them and eat them um, because they'll brown very quickly usually and um, if you want to prep something like apple slices ahead of time or if you have children and you know you're only slicing half at a time uh, you can submerge them in a bowl of cold water and add some lemon juice and the citric acid acts as a pres um, natural preservative and keeps those from going brown so um, and then the same with avocados so Avocados contain enzymes that actually create a brown pigment, pig, pigment when they're exposed to oxygen. So that's um, called, uh, that's why your guacamole looks super unappetizing. It goes brown and you just don't want to eat that the day after. But we all have some tips and tricks. And if um, if you have a tip, put it in the, in the comment section. But here are a few of mine. So I use lemon or lime juice because that citric acid will give you a day or two to keep the avocado green. Um, I usually just eat a whole avocado at a time <laughs> because I love them. But you can also like store them with the pit in. So if you slice it in half, um, the half that keeps the pit, the pit will help keep it um, fresh longer. And then put the lemon juice and then you can put that in a Ziploc bag. Another option is uh, to mash up your avocado um, and put it in a bowl or a container sort of like as if you're mashing guacamole um, and then cover it with a layer of water uh, because that water will not absorb because you you've got a dense avocado made of primarily fat water and oil don't mix so that layer just protects the avocado from oxygen and um, yeah and then when you're ready to have avocado you know if you want to make your avocado toast you can just pour the water off scoop some out and put it on your toast so that's that's another little cool trick leafy greens so um so do your spinach and lettuce wilt too quickly before you can eat it because that's one of the biggest complaints that I've heard so the most important thing to keep in mind is that you want your leafy greens to be dry and um, a lot of times I don't wash mine until I'm ready to eat them um, but if you want to wash before you store, if that's your, the way, the order that you do, you can wash them and soak them in cold water for about five minutes and give them a swirl around in that water and then put them in a salad spinner to dry before you put them and make sure they're completely dry. If you don't have a salad spinner, you can use a large, clean, dry dish cloth. Uh, dishcloth and gather them up and then just like bounce and sh shake the excess water off and then put them into another dry towel to dry them off completely and make sure that they're completely dry before you store them because the wet leaves will make them go mush very quickly um, and then something if you're putting them in one of your plastic containers or any kind of container like a box helps protect the leaves from being smushed um, you want to line that container with paper towels because that also helps draw the moisture out and keeps them fresh longer. I also um, store mine in a sealed container. It's As long as your leafy greens are not wet, you can definitely store them. Like if you completely dry them, uh, something with a sealed lid keeps them even longer, uh, I found even more so than the container that they come in. So our berries are very sensitive and oh so delicious. I love all berries. 
So they're super delicate. And what I've found the best way to handle them is I fill a big bowl of cold water and I add a couple tablespoons of white vinegar um, to soak them in. And, and don't worry, they won't absorb or take on the flavor of the vinegar. It's, it's simply just helps give them a good clean and let them just swim, give it a swirl around. And then you want to um, have a paper towel or lined plate and let them dry out. And once they're dry, you can keep them in a strainer or any vessel that allows air to filter. I actually just put them back in the clamshell that they came in. Um, and you do not want to seal your berries because that trap, it will trap the moisture and they're full of their own moisture. So it'll just trap that and, and they'll go bad faster, more quickly. So let's not do that. Now let's talk about potatoes. So here again, never, ever, ever refrigerate your potatoes, your onions, your squash, or your garlic. The cold temperatures changes the texture and the flavor. So with the potatoes, the cold temperatures actually turn the starch into sugar more quickly. So you'll notice if you put them, if you've ever put them in the refrigerator, they get kind of soft. That's why. And then you end up with just a potato that is grittier and sweeter. And you don't want that. And um, also, just worth mentioning, storing, because your tomatoes are on, they prefer room temperature. And it's also worth noting that if you do stick them in the fridge, and if you think about it, because I talked to my dad about this even, um, they lose, the, their texture definitely changes when you put a tomato in the refrigerator, but it also loses flavor. So you want to keep those out in the countertop and, um, you know, and remember to put them on your salads and your sandwiches. So let's talk about your veggie crisper. Do you use your veggie crisper in the way that it's meant to use? Like what are the crisper drawers for in your refrigerator? So most have different levels of humidity that you can adjust for high and low humidity. So um, while it might be seem like a perfect place to put, you know, your pack of sodas <laughs> or seltzer water. I don't drink soda, but I do drink those little uh, flavored uh, sparkling waters that come in a can. Don't put them in your crisper. Use your crisper for your vegetables. Um, it helps keep your fruits and veggies fresher for longer. That's what they're there for. So um, if you have something with an adjustable humidity setting, um, it's worth noting that you'll want to take your thin, skinnier, leafy vegetables like asparagus, your herbs, or your greens, which are prone to wilting, or losing moisture quickly, you wanna put those in the high humidity drawer, right? Um, that's uh, your thin, skinnier, leafy type of vegetables, uh, such as asparagus, those who like um, water, you know, like uh, fresh herbs. I'll talk about asparagus and fresh herbs again, uh, how to keep those fresh later in this. So those are in high, hum put it in your high humidity setting. If you have a low humidity setting, the high ethylene producing fruits are the ones that you want to put in those um, drawers. So, and if you don't have humidity controls, you still want to try to use your two drawers if you have them, or just make sure that you're separating your produce by the ethylene production. That's why, um, so your leafy greens or those that are sensitive to ethylene production in one, one drawer and in your other drawer, you want to put the ethylene producing vegetables and fruits in. Um, so that's that. So what do you do when your produce is about to go bad? Freeze it, but don't wait until it looks like this. <laughs> don't freeze that and don't eat that. Um, if your strawberries are looking a little sad or your mangoes need to be eaten as soon as possible um, and your bananas are on the verge of, um, you know, reaching their beyond uh, brown state, uh, instead of forcing yourself to eat the foods, you can throw them away 
or 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 throwing them away you can freeze them so i do that a lot of times um also if you buy uh strawberries when they're in season i do that and the prices are good you can store them cut them up cut and put them in a freezer bag and and freeze them so um i am going to have a link below with a blog that i like to follow that talks about the foods that you freeze and foods not to freeze another thing that i like to do with freezing foods um my vegetables that i have left over such as like broccoli stems or like the ends of onions that you know i chop to a certain point um instead of tossing those away i put those in a freezer bag and um keep them in the freezer and then eventually I'll you know when I have enough I'll bring them out and make a nice vegetable stock with that um, with those frozen vegetables so that's another thing that um, that I use my freezer for with my fruits and veggies and it you know I get the most use out of out of my food that way so what about our herbs what do we do with our herbs okay so the best way to store our herbs basil remember stays on the countertop basil is super sensitive to ref to the to chillier temperatures and if you've ever noticed by putting them in the refrigerator they go bad very very quickly um, however your other herbs that you have you they like to be moist so you can um, wrap them in a damp not wet but damp paper towel to keep them fresh so you could wet your hands and just like use that water to dampen the paper towel wrap them or what I like to do is I save the little um, glass containers um, that I get from, you know, if I have a jar of, you know, tapenade, olive tapenade or something, um, trim a little bit off the stem of those and uh, what, put some water in that little jar and you can just place them right down in the water that helps them stay fresh longer and then just like you would a bouquet of flowers and then cover them loosely with a little bit of plastic. And then put it in the refrigerator, uh, 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 except for basil. You can do the same with the basil, um, putting it in water like you would flowers, but keep it out. Don't, don't um, keep it at room temperature for the basil. And celery. Okay, so how many times have you had your celery go rubbery? So one tip that you could do is wrap that in aluminum foil because the plastic bag traps in... Um, the ethylene gas and it also um, traps in the moisture so the foil actually lets the gas escape and your celery will stay crisp for longer and if you do happen to have celery that goes past its best by date and it goes a little bit rubbery you can also stick that in um, a bowl of water to crisp it right back up so um, what else can we do with paper towels So if you're planning on letting your leafy produce sit for a few days, um, you can also delay washing it, which is what I usually do sometimes. Um, I live alone, so uh, I definitely don't eat a whole container of salad in one day. <laughs> um, or, you know, uh, a head of lettuce. Like, uh, So what you can do is keep, keep it whole you know if, it, if especially if it's like in a head uh and not already like in greens like you buy in the box like wrap it up in a burrito with a few sheets of paper towel and that paper towel put that in a plastic bag and leave a little bit of air space in that bag and the paper towels and the plastic combination will help keep your um your lettuce crisp for up to a couple weeks now your bagged veggies like green beans, snap peas, and snow peas can benefit from the same treatment. So you can open up that bag, uh, wrap them up in a paper towel, and then put them right back in the plastic bag. So, all right, let's talk about mushrooms. Also, they usually come in a little container covered in plastic, um, in a plastic, yeah, like you want to take, remove that plastic. You don't want to trap 
moisture. They definitely like air circulation. So the best thing to do with your mushrooms is take them out of their plastic and put them in an open paper bag uh, and put them back in the refrigerator or line a bowl with paper towels and, and, and place that in the fridge, put, you know, put them in a bowl lined with paper towels. Either of those, just make sure that they have some air circulating so they don't go gross and slimy too quickly on you. So now we have water lovers. So carrots and asparagus both tend to dry out very quickly. Um, so my asparagus, I always put sort of like just in a larger mace, mason jar with water and put the um, carrot or the asparagus down, stems down in so that they can take up that water and they stay moist and they don't dry out. And the carrots that you buy with the leaves, just like in this picture, you wanna take those leaves pop that off cut it off um, because those that greenery pulls out nutrients just um, out of of your carrots so just remove the greenery and um, and yeah and then you want to store these in a fridge the other thing that you can do with carrots is put submerge them completely in water whether it's in like um, a, a Tupperware or um, a Ziploc bag store it in the fridge and water and they'll say they'll stay fresh longer um so yep yeah, that's that's it let's see okay so i will have below this a list of links that i used and resources to put this class and webinar together for you so um check below for the list of links if you want more information and um if you would like uh to have a consultation I have a link below for a free 50 minute health consultation where if you are dealing with any um, health issues or concerns or or if you have a goal that you would like to meet and you just want to talk talk that out with me something that you've been aiming at meeting but haven't quite been able to get there I would love to discuss that with you so um, Thank you for your time, and that's a wrap. So go eat your vegetables, and I'll see you soon.